<laughs> you want to yell at me because the camera's on. You're going right, I can see. I'm going right. <laughs> Go left. Jesus. So I don't that's... think I've ever seen a brand new backing plate. You know, come to think of this, is the first one I've ever had. And it's yours. Dan here, the Speed Shop. Man, we're back at it. So finally, well, I guess not finally, it's only been a few days, but uh, the fun part, motor in deal. Now, we've been jamming for, yeah, like three or four days. Kind of made a roller. We're missing a few little bits and bobs here, but that's fine. I would really like to see if this thing is going to drop down at all. She, she, she seems pretty stiff. So <laughs> we'll see. So here's the mill we're going to work with. Get you guys off your little perch here. Um, so I had this thing built earlier in the year. I actually, the original plan was I had this motor built for a spare to the motor that's in the Nomad for Power Tour because that thing was so last minute. I was like, if this thing lets go, we're hooped. Anyhow, this is what we got to so it's a little 327, solid lifter deal, probably like 350, 375 horse, you know, a bit of a camshaft in it. Uh, we, we went through a video of it before, but it should be fun. We got these L used uh, fender well headers. I believe they're Speedway deals. This transmission was originally in my Nomad, so it's a rebuilt deal with a bit of a stall. It's like a BM, I don't know. Like, I think the most stall you get before you get to like a small style converter, you know what I mean? We're gonna slap that in there as well, put those together, some random ring gear I had, and then inside we got a whole bunch of Rock Auto uh, doodad starter, water pump, uh, fuel pump, AC Delco brand, all that sort of stuff. But step one is attach ring gear to motor, motor to transmission. What we're gonna do here for the, uh, the mount, it's actually a pretty slick setup, so obviously Speedway kind of has their own deal, so it makes it very, very easy. You get your standard, uh, well these are like side mount kind of deals. So they'll go on the side and that'll make a flat surface. So that's exactly how they're gonna go. And then, uh, so you gotta picture it. It's gonna do something like that on the motor. And use these little biscuit mounts. So I believe between here will be that. You'll take the top one off. And then like that will go like that. And that is essentially it. We do have Oh yeah, valve covers, Mickey Thompson's. This is the factory uh, cross member. I'm hoping we can reuse it. Uh, I would assume Mr. Chevrolet in his wisdom made the six cylinders, the automatics and all those things, the transmission and all that in the same kind of length. I did hear that when it was a V8, they offset the motor a little bit. I guess because of the steering box. So a lot of guys are saying on the forums and all that that you have to slot your transmission cross member to make it straight because these are actually offset. Ah, this is a pain. But see, these ones look to be pretty centered up. And as I recall, when I was doing my big block Nova, I did have to slot them over one way or the other when I put the, the, the big block in. But because of the steering box, obviously, and the headers and all these, the front axle kit, it just keeps it straight. So hopefully that'll just work and bolt into place because that would be cherry. Otherwise, we're screwing around messing with that. But let's get set up, bolt the mill and all that together, and uh, carry on. So step one is unbolt it from the, the stand and pull these ridiculous headers off. This is honestly the number one reason we built this whole car, because these cool headers. All right, so here's the part we all love the most. I'm trying to get a transmission on the back of the motor. Solo, oh, I needed that. Um, ah. 
So let's just double check. Oh yeah. Converter's in there all the way, so you wanna make sure that's seated. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat a little. So to try and get the transmission, you wanna get on these dowel pins, which is a freaking disaster. So I'm gonna take some long bolts, thread these in. We're gonna trim the heads off and turn them into little guides. And then you can kind of line it up a little further away. Go from there. This is probably fine, eh? We'll zip this off real quick. Oh man, I ripped the hell out of my jeans today. Okay, so we got our deal all situated. Why is everything so heavy all the time? So, get her kind of started. Look at your back. Okay. getting heavier so now we just got to get a couple of these started and pull them pins out We got sound? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, got this hot rod motor all together. Um, it should go pretty simple. I was going to say something about this, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, the oil pan. So we put a big honking oil pan on it um, to get as much oil in this thing as we can. Now, typically on these little Chevy 2s, you got issues, but I'm assuming because it's a straight axle, there will be no rules. So, hopefully everything will just fit uh, hunky-dory. Hopefully. This thing is definitely tall. It's like putting a motor in a truck. All right, couple of pumps. Think she's just gonna go in mint or what? Hmm? Think it'll just go in mint? Oh, all right. Wow, this is pretty simple. Oh. So, I think it'll just kind of do its own thing. Whoops. Got all these new parts. Oh, transmission. Okay. Get her loaded in there. Honestly, not too bad. Oh. Well, this is the most room you've ever had putting in a motor. The 55 was pretty good too, because you could just take the whole front clip off. Oh yeah, sure. Away she goes. Oh, wow, the motor really sits down in there. This is easy, like, the legs don't hit nothing. Oh, I screwed up. It's like installing a motor with a shopping cart. Oh, screwed up again. In theory, the legs don't hit nothing? <laughs> Well, the legs don't hit nothing, but uh, unfortunately, being on the lift and then these tires that are touching the quarter panels, we can't roll the car. So that's a bit of a hassle. But I'm thinking, is there a block of wood around here? Oh, right there behind you. Ooh, we just about jacked this right up in the transmission panel. Now we're gonna go save with a block of wood. You know, here at DD Speed Shop, we really care. 
people still email me, look at my car. Do you not watch the videos? Oh yeah. Well, something's, something's rubbing something. Yeah, I think we're good. Sure, a little cattywampus, but. Oh, you know what? Well, I put these motor mounts in or get it at least close. Man, how many times I spent walking around an engine crane in my life? I think I nailed it. So I don't really know how these work. But, thinking something like that. Oh, I may need a little, uh, what do I need here? Can you pump that up, actually? This might be a bit of a two-person operation. Yeah, give her again. Okay. I think that's all the pieces. Oh, come on. Okay, now let her down slow, but don't crush my fingers. No pressure, no pressure. Right or left? Left. I can't get it. A little. Okay, I'll just hold it. You're going right, I can see. I'm going right. <laughs> Go left. Jesus. <laughs> okay. That's why I got ten fingers. Uh, jack it up. Jack it up slowly. <laughs> we might have to do a training class on left and right with the engine crane. Get right there. Perfect. Oh, I think we nailed it. My flute playing fingers. Uh, okay, this side's actually pretty much aligned. These are the ticket right here. Look at that. Um, what should we do here? I don't really want to put my fingers under it again. You jack it up a little? Just my own trust issues, not against you. Yep, go on. One more? Perfect. Well, this is for sure the way I should have done it in the first place. Oh. Okay, drop her down. Try, try and go slow. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Look at that. In frickin' stall. There's a lot of room there now. Probably should go on the big block, eh? So, I guess we'll scale up to sneak under there and see if the transmission cross member is all good or not. Because if that is, it'll be perfect because uh, there's no screwing around with the angle or nothing. She'll be what she's going to be. Then, put the headers on. Test it all out. So I'm going to crawl under there and see what the transmission situation is looking like and uh, be back shortly. Well, motor is in. The transmission is in. The mount went okay. It fit not bad. I didn't write bolts. I just jammed some long ones in there. Just hold it so it's just supporting it. It's not actually bolted down, which is fine for now. This whole car is kind of just being... We're like mocking it up and building it at the same time. It'll be a lot of like, you know, change of bolts here and there. But that fits fine. We got lots and lots of room everywhere. I was just putting these uh, Mickey valve covers on, set this thing off, and I figured I'd kind of show you a few things. So, carburetor's almost flat, 1.7 degrees. Uh, we have like a couple of degrees of slope more than that down, so that should be good. I got to get in there, it definitely looks tight in the transmission tunnel, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And uh, if we want to put a gear vendor in this thing, which is the plan, I got one on order, there's not a lot of room in there. So there's gonna be a little modification to the floor, but such is life. Um, so, but anyways, here's the mill here. So, you know, John Cecil really styled me on this thing. So it's got like one six, 
uh, roller rockers. It's got like big block Chevy studs. I mean, it's got all sorts of stuff. They did little tricks to it. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty mint. Um, I'm gonna have to get, a, I wanna get a few spare pieces for this for the road trip. It's got like a unique length push rod. So it's something I should have in the trunk just in case we bend one or do something like that. Anything that's kind of missing along the way, it's gonna be hard to get. We should uh, get a few doubles. You know, I got extra wheel bearing stuff like that coming as well. But let's uh, set the camera up. We'll put the valve covers on. Oh, Speedway sent these, which is pretty, pretty uh, cool. They're little uh, acorn kind of tie down deals. That's kind of nice. I've never had those before. So we got that in there and there was something else I wanted to talk about that was pretty slick. Nah, maybe it'll come to me, but I want to hang the headers, kind of make this thing look like a badass hot rod. Well, we got the mill in there. Um, headers fit good, valve covers look good. Uh, I found these are ball and socket style. Man, these headers have been cut and welded. They were cheap, but uh, they were slipped together so they were ugly welded. Then they had a different, I don't know, some sort of collector, which were shaded to a ball and socket style, which I found a pair, which was kind of cool to trim those down, make that fit. Um, there's like scavenge pipes. Or whatever for the valve covers and uh one of them i guess it's got a little o2 bung i gotta plug so these would be cool if they were white but no one here does like the jet coating or hot coating whites you gotta do it with a rattle can that never ever 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 lasts so this will be uh how they look it looks kind of cool and ratty now next step will be kind of the front dress and all sorts of little bits i have to run to the store and get some things i have a water pump I have like starter and all those sort of things, I believe. The real struggle we're going into, I'm hoping will be fixed. My buddy Richard, he kind of built the same ish car and uh, he gave me a link to this low slung uh, alternator kind of bracket deal. So that's off Scamazon. I'm hoping it'll work because typically these stupid fuely heads, which are awesome but they're not drilled for uh, any sort of hardware. So you can't put your alternator up top like you usually would. I'm gonna run a short water pump, uh, all, all that kind of stuff, like truck style stuff. No, long water pump, truck style, sorry. Typically, the alternator would be way out here and bracket off the exhaust and it's just got this huge belt, which I freaking hate. So I think this one puts it down low there or something, but I'll have to do some whatever. That's on the road, it's a little kind of shiny, but eh, whatever, we might get some shiny pulleys to offset it. We're gonna leave, so this is like a vintage Edelbrock C4B, I don't know, uh, intake manifold. We're gonna leave that on there for right now, just keep everything sealed up. Um, we are gonna run the tunnel ram, I wanna get that blasted. So it will be a dual quad deal. I'd like to have a scoop, I don't know if we're gonna run a hood, we'll see what happens, but uh, I guess we'll have to run a hood because it's gonna live down south, needs a hood. Um, I'm going with that. Anyway, so the things that are, I don't want to say hold me up right now because we still have time, but are on order. So we got a few things from Speedway, um, just like a new, you know, tie bar or whatever it is. I ordered some steering stuff because I didn't have that ordered before. Got a little odds and ends, nothing serious. I got a rad coming and fan from uh, Delta PAG. So that was hopefully be on its way next week. That'll be the, like the ticket. Uh, again, for like an overheating standpoint, I don't want to overheat at all. So. We got a pretty honky tonk and rad for it. And then also oh, a couple of carburetors. I ordered a couple of carburetors. So the guys put them all together. I'll show you those when they show up. But my thing is those carburetors are, might not be here for a couple of weeks. And if we get to a point where this thing kind of runs and drives, we can just put a single four on it 
and drive it then change the, the carburetors or the intake and carbs it's no big deal same with the gear bender and gear bender is like backed up like there's no tomorrow so we might end up putting this all together is driving it a single carburetor no gear bender and you know tool around because the car hasn't had a lot of miles on it i mean it went around the block went in for inspection came back so and now it's a whole different car so the tunnel ram and all that can be done at any time and that's that's fun stuff let's be honest this is well this isn't fun but this is kind of grueling and tedious and there's a lot to it so see so if we can get the rest of the motor put together this episode and then really we can start hanging front sheet metal which sounds easy except we realize this all has to come apart which is going to be a nightmare a little ways into the future and i am hitting roadblock after roadblock part of which is it's the weekend and i didn't do enough planning ahead of time which is a real shocker for me but anyway um got this kind of together got some new well, water pump on it got some new pulleys a few things i don't like while well, i'm missing one uh fine thread 3 8 bolt also the crank pulley it's just barely barely in there but to me turn it's going to get like three threads on so i'm going to get a longer one of them put this snazzy uh, alternator bracket from scamazon on there it actually looks not too bad i mean it's cheap but it should work and kind of keep the belt all good um the speed shop didn't have any mufflers well they had mufflers they didn't have two matching ones so that's a pain so i ordered some off amazon they're a ways away so we're not doing exhaust today uh what else we got going on oh, i don't have starter bolts so can't put the starter on just little stuff like that it's killing me i found this little uh o2 or afr whatever you want to call it gauge i might do that oh i did put a bung in there i kind of feel like that's about as far as we're gonna get here for now which is fine everything can be done kind of at any point i think the next thing i'm gonna do is gonna tackle this little bit of rust here all i'm gonna do is just grind it down weld a plate on it with some sheet metal it'll be you know whatever 18 gauge it'll be fine for what that is and once you get that all dialed oh i didn't get bolts for the transmission well maybe we'll maybe we'll run out and get some more but um i'd like to jack this thing up and then once it's kind of whatever it's going to be we can do the math and set the pinion and distance side to side on the pads get that all dialed together and maybe we'll trim the body just a little bit to fit these big tires so it can roll forward and back and then we'll also have a measurement for drive shaft we want to get one of those cut next week which i kind of feel like we should it's a bit of a waste of money but with the way parts are going and all that i think test miles is key i put on oh i had this master People always ask, I get ones just off like a 71 or something like that, Nova. You can get Corvette ones that have dual spigots, so if you want it on both sides. It's a little, a little close to the header, but I think if we go just up, straight back, and then back down, we should be okay. I mean, there's not a whole lot we can do, and then we can wrap the tube or whatever, but I, I think it'll be fine. People are panicked about the Nomad, and it was no big deal on those, and I'm not the first guy to do this, so you know, Google it, see what other people do. But yeah do that get it all done today make it a roller and the next video we can start putting the front clip on like make it look like a car man while we're waiting on parts because everything else we have to do if the front clip's in with like three bolts we can take it off but it's like front end stuff easy exhaust easy plumbing uh when you're plumbing fuel and and brake and all that sort of stuff i kind of like having everything on anyways because otherwise endlessly you're moving stuff around and you're like oh this has to go here that has to go there so I think the front clip will go on tomorrow, but let's get this welded up, get the rear end up in the air, weld that. The nice thing about welding, as long as you have welding wire and gas, you can't run out of parts.
can hardly tell it's rusty. Put the fender on there, she's good. Paint it black. I don't know if we, I mean, I guess the time has come and gone now to paint the firewall black, but meh. Race car shit. Now, let's get the rear end dialed together. So, I jumped ahead just a little bit. We'll get kind of set up. I'll kind of show you what we're doing. So the wheels are off. I have it sitting on jack stands. It's still kind of all floating, but the, the rear weight is on. So that's good. Now, what I've done or did, not my angle finder. It's all gonna be out to lunch now, but I put my angle finder on a couple of different places. So I always usually go off the machine surface of where the starter is. And then you can put right up against like a tail shaft, you join some sort of machine uh, surface. So anyways, the motor and transmission are angling down at about four, four and a half degrees. Now the way driveline angles work, at least this way I'm gonna do it, is you wanna do equal and opposite angles. So if the transmission is four and a half degrees down, you want the rear end four and a half degrees up. Ideal is like three degrees. So we might see what we can do um, if we could space the transmission up a little bit, we might be able to kind of play with the rear end, just, just a scotch. So anyway, and you want to do this loaded, obviously. So now that the rear end is, uh, is loaded, we got, it's free there. We're going to measure from, uh, I don't know what we're going to measure from, know, leaf to axle or end of it to the, to the nub, either way, get it centered in the rear end. I think it's a little bit towards me so we'll have to loosen the u-bolts get that centered then we'll put the angle finder probably right on the machine bit of the yoke and then that'll give us our you know up and down degree we can then tack it in a few spots then we can lift it up and get under there and weld it much nicer than, than doing this so there you have it i might try and cheat it just kind of go four degrees See if we can get another half degree over there and we're within a degree of the ideal three. I think it'd be fine. I've done this a bunch of times like that and haven't really had any issues. And if it's all wrong, you just cut it apart and re-weld it. So you guys get them to watch another video of me screwing up. So I'm gonna get set up here. And I mean, it's just a bunch of math, which I'm not really good at. Luckily it's like grade seven math. So that's like kind of right about where I stopped paying attention. So let's get after it, weld her all together. So, uh, I'm gonna lie down on the job here. Oh, camera. So, what I did was I measured basically the bottom of the side saddle to where the axle flange would be. We got uh, one and five eighths on each side, which, I mean, it's not much, but that's what we got. The next thing I did was I ran a ratchet strap around kind of the front of the diff, that way I could get my pinion. We loosened the bolts here. So they're, you know, again, they're kind of loose. Now we can get this in here. Man, there's just a lot happening right now. Let me get that on there. Is that gonna, you guys see it? We're like right on four, four degrees. So I think that is where I'm gonna leave it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna give four ugly tacks to everything. We can then tighten up these U-bolts and uh, everything should be good as far as I'm concerned. Lift her up and buzz her in hot. Then we can pull the axles real quick, backing plates, brakes. Then we can start cutting to fit the wheels and tires. I'm thinking, I think I smashed the hell of this with a hammer. We don't have much before we're right into the, uh, the body itself. So if we can kind of just zip this maybe zip up in here and almost just fold this trim ahead a little bit i think that might be enough then up in here we're gonna have to cut all this out and then i don't know how strong this is oh it's pretty strong there's an inner wheel tub i think we might be able to cut a section of the inner wheel tub out and then uh, hammer it seam seal it or whatever and then we're right where the peak of the tire is there'll be no inner wheel tub because it kicks in oh, not much but just enough so it'd be kind of cool if we don't have to radius it, but I'm not against cutting. So let's uh, let's get this tacked real quick and up in the air and buzzed in permanente. And really, so the weight's on the thing. We have lots of room for the diff and all that. Actually, it'll really work out uh, pretty nice under here. I always get worried because when you put a 9-inch in something, the housing is so freaking big compared to a stock one. It's unbelievable, but we should be good.
Okay, I jumped ahead. There was some, well, quite a bit of tomfoolery afoot. Uh, I ended up cutting the rear end out and redoing it. And, you know, I thought about, you know, I was gonna film it, but it took me so long, I was screwing around, I was like, ah, whatever. So what happened was, I had it all good, as you guys hopefully saw, but some of you are probably screaming at the screen. The issue I ran into is these isolator pads are squishy. So <laughs> I had it sitting there and I had it snug, but as you tighten, it can affect by a couple of degrees, as it turns out, um, the, the, the pinion angle. So I was like, well, that's crazy. So I had to kind of cut it all out, which was ugly, plasma cutter, whatever. Got it centered back where I was, tightened the hell out of all everything. And it was back and forth with a hammer and stuff, but there's still like, there's some flex in that rear end with those isolators, which I guess is just kind of how it is. I mean, I don't know what else there's gonna be. So it's got about four and a half or four, three, four, one, depending on how you friggin' the wind blows. So it should match, whatever. Worst case, I guess, I don't know if you can put shims on these things, you must be able to, but put like a one degree shim in it. I don't see it being a problem. But I guess we'll uh, we'll just kind of see. See whatever happens, happens. Uh, I did put the brakes and stuff on this side. Um, obviously, pull the axles out. So I think we'll get set up. We'll do the other side. And uh, with that, then we'll... Uh, well, I'm going to take a break because it is supper time. And we'll see what we got to do for trimming of stuff. I feel like the wheel tub's got a lot of room, but this sticks out into the tub a little bit. And obviously, we have some situation to deal with here. So I'll see if I can, peel. oh, this piece has its own deal. That's kind of nice, we could take this one piece off. Um, I saw a picture of one of these things with uh, all the trim on it, it as a gasser and it looked freaking cool. So we'll see what we can maybe reproduce or screw around. And just depending on how crazy we wanna go with the straight axle, it's pretty cool that that one had a drop axle in it. And I know my buddy Josh just did a drop axle. Not really my jam, at the end of the day, um, the drop axles are sweet, but you, this is quarter wall axle, it's hard to bend the quarter wall, so you got to drop down to like 3 or something like that, and I think those can bend and screw around and do whatever. <laughs> Not that we're doing wheelies or whatever it may be, but just from a long haul standpoint, strength is where I was going with this, and that's why uh, Speedway and all that, we decided to go with that. But anyways, I digress. Let's get set up on the other side. Slam it all together, it's pretty simple little setup. Bolt it all in and then uh, we'll have some tacos or something for dinner. Danny was just telling me a super interesting story about peanut butter sandwiches. Anyway, so pretty, pretty simple. We'll put the studs in and then put on the backing plate. It is brand new backing plate. It's pretty slick. Now we've already hammered in a little race for the axle. So I don't that's, think I've ever seen a brand new backing plate. You know, come to think of this, is the first one I've ever had. As yours. I cheaped out when I did my car. I reused Tri-5 Chevy brakes. Man. Anyway, you know, we probably could just use a stock rear end for what you're gonna do with this thing. So this is the, the little bearing. They'll go in there and then it's got this little kind of, you know, seal with the little, I don't know, washer or whatever the hell it is. So kind of get this fit in. Gingerly slide her in there. And this little, it's got like a dual, you're not, you're not gonna be able to see in here for sure, but it's got like a dual uh, seal. So just kind of get it started. Cause it has a seal on the inside on the axle shaft. And instead of having it like an O-ring on the bearing, like most do, it's, it's Got like this little tin seal thing, so gotta kind of mess with it a little bit, but I think that went in. The axle's in. Our little retainer. These are sweet. A lot of them you have to have the retainer on the the axle before the bearing. This one you just put on after, a little, little cutout. So we'll try and put this together. And it's kind of a bit of a I don't want to say a hassle, but it's, everything just has to all kind of fit together before you can snug it all up. So we'll just get this taken care of real quick and then we'll, uh, we'll come back when we're tightening because I want to get this all squared up. Okay, so we got all the 
studs kind of started the axle smashed in we're just going to kind of start by pulling this in slowly i didn't have a 916 so using a 14 millimeter but it is dd speed chop the idea i watched the video on it you just want to kind of rotate this you know i probably shouldn't put the brake drum on the other side but whatever uh we're kind of i guess as you're tightening it in just spin it also i guess it's like a wheel bearing right so you want to make sure it's seated so get a little bit of that there's this handy hole to get in here and tighten everything up this isn't kind of going in as nice as the other one for some reason we'll just see what happens get a little snug oh that's how i went in good And there we go, it's pretty much all we gotta do, as long as that's in all right. We should be golden! Oh yeah, wait a minute. I was just being a little, a little weak on the trigger. So the seal goes in and then you're supposed to, as you tighten it, it kind of balloons up. So that's what gives it its optimum sealing effect. Stupid metric on standard and stuff. Green sliver, dude. Ouch. Why does slivers hurt so much? They're so tiny. Do all of those things have one of those holes for your drill? Do all of those things. Do all of these? Uh, if it's a, a hole? Yeah, if you have a like a bolt-in axle, like a Ford style like, like this, it will have a, a hole in it. Like I think Tri-5 Chevys do on the factory stuff. GM, so like this is a, a different style ram, but the that one's really like it has like a plate on the back. They're they're called C clips. So what you would do is the uh, the axle is held in just by a little clip inside. So there's not a whole lot of load holding it the, the axle in. This is just kind of holding the bearing and all that. The the load is in the the twisties. Mint. So that spins good, no issues there. Get a little bit of drag from the other side with the brake drum. Square it away. I think there is a torque to this, but I think I just go until it stops. Probably, probably fine. So that's mint. And then I'll have to adjust this out, I bet. Brand freaking new. Oh yeah, after this can see, I don't know if I should put a spring for a set of decent shocks on this. What the? Mint, brand new. So there we have it. Now we can actually measure for a drive shaft if we want. Loaded, we gotta load it up again, yet again, but uh, we're pretty much there. I might put the old shocks in, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but I think it's time to take a break, get something to eat, and then we'll try and fit these big honking tires. They might fit better now or worse, because the rear end is completely centered, and before the axle wasn't all the way in, and then we had the drums, so it will affect the spacing slightly. So we'll <laughs> just see. I really don't wanna cut the quarters anymore. I kind of like how it was all tucked in there, but race car stuff. If we got to cut the quarters, I think we're going to go with a bigger tire. I think it looks good. Yeah. She's giving me the good enough for tacos. All right, let's get something to eat. I'm hungry. I need some new pants. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything. They're just being destroyed today. <laughs> Old Navy doesn't sell a good pant anymore. So back up here we're back on the ground it's looking pretty good i gotta say i do like this fitment of the tire i mean obviously a big tire stuffed looks pretty good but this is clearly rubbing um i don't know what we're gonna be able to do it's gonna be tight we're about a, a finger's width away from the spring so we can't do anything with the back spacing on the wheel i think what we're gonna do for now i'm gonna take off this piece this one piece of trim and see if i can just cut this at a at a slight angle that aways on both sides. I may have to just slice the lip a little bit and that'll let the thing roll. The problem we're gonna run into is you can see this body line. 
as it curves up so it gets tight up in there. So it'll be able to roll. Um, the issue is going to be driving in the suspension travel. It's going to rub the sidewall. There's no bones about it. But we can decide what we want to do, think about it, decide if we want to get a bigger tire or radius these ones or see if we can modify the wheel tub. There's a lot to do, but realistically today I just want to get that all taken care of so we can start mounting this. I'm trying to trying to work a little cleaner. Man, the boxes is ridiculous. So let's get set up. We'll jack this thing up one more time, pull the wheels, cut, put it back on and call her a night. Okay, so we got her kind of sitting down, kind of a bit of an ugly cut. I don't know how it shows up on camera, but I'll need to kind of do more of a pie slice and fold her for it. But the tires fit now anyways, I think it should roll-ish a little bit. And we can decide how much cutting we want to do on the inner wheel tub, if we can do that. Or I was thinking, might be a little butcher, but if we could actually put maybe like a board across here and like pour the power out and just give it a little bit because we're, we're only talking half inch or something like that and that might look kind of cool i mean if hopefully you wouldn't be able to tell too much we can just force that over just a little bit if your eye's not drawn to it put the trim back on and then that big honk of tire fit in there and i think that would look the best if we're going to radius it we do got to go bigger as far as i'm concerned story of my life anyways motors in transmissions in rear end is in uh we can start measuring for drive shaft for monday so I think I'm gonna, we're gonna put this in just as is. We'll wait on the gear vendor. That's gonna be probably a week or two away. And with the rate we're going right now, if all my Speedway stuff shows up, then we should be driving this thing hopefully within you know, a week-ish, give or take. At least take it for a ride around the block. We still gotta plumb the brakes. We gotta do all sorts of screwing around, but we have got the big stuff done. Now it's the little stuff that does take a lot of time, I will admit, but uh, Plumbing is plumbing and you know all that sort of stuff. We gotta change the fuel tank yet. I think we're basically out of boxes. We gotta put seats in, take out those high backs, put in those new low backs we got, and go from there. But next up, front clip's going on. Make it look like a friggin' car, because that is gonna be so friggin' motivational. I can't explain it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. Uh, please comment below, and if you have any questions, go ask Speedway, because I don't know anything. Anyways, that's it for me. Subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one. Well, see you on the next one.